In this video, we'll discuss the elastic properties of dislocations. This includes the stress field of dislocations and the strain energy of dislocations. From the last video, you learned that the lattice planes around the dislocation cores are bent. This is true for both screw and edge dislocations. Because locally these lattice planes are bent, there are stress fields associated with them. Before looking at the details of the stress fields around dislocation cores, let's use one slide to quickly go through what kind of stresses an element can experience. In general, there are two types of stresses, normal stresses and shear stresses. In the example shown on the left, sigma xx, sigma yy, and sigma zz, these are normal stresses. These are also called hydrostatic stresses. The second type of stresses, such as sigma xy, sigma yz, sigma zy, and sigma zx, these are called shear stresses. Next, we'll look at the normal stress field and the shear stress field around the dislocation cores. Looking at the screw dislocation first, on the left we have a cubic model, and on the right we have the cylindrical model. Notice the dislocation core has been taken out. This is because at the dislocation core, continuity breaks down. The elastic theory cannot be applied. Also, if you look at the displacement caused by the screw dislocation core, all the changes happen along the z-direction, while there's no displacement in the x and the y directions. If you go around from the origin by 360 degrees, the z-value changes as theta increases. Since there's no displacement along the x and the y directions, therefore the strain along the x, x, y, y, x, y, and y-x directions are equal to zero. Along the z-direction, there's no normal strain either, so the strain E, Z, Z is also equal to zero. However, there is a shear along the z-direction. Therefore, the strain along the x-z, z-x, and y-z, z-y directions are non-zeros. They can be expressed as a function of theta and r in the polar system or x and y in the Cartesian system. To convert the strain field to a stress field, it's very simple. All we have to do is to multiply the strain by the shear modulus g. Since sigma xz and sigma yz are non-zeros, let's plot them and have a look. These two figures show the stress field around the screw dislocation core. The one on the left is along the xz direction, the one on the right is along the yz direction. There are a few interesting things to point out. First, do not worry about the very center. It should be taken out because it's the dislocation core, where the continuity breaks down. Second, these images are viewed along the z-axis. So the z-axis is either going into or out of the screen. You can combine this information along with the 3D model on the top. Third, the stress field around the dislocation core, on one side it is negative, on the other is positive. Similarly, in the yz direction, one side is positive, one side is negative. So we have those two lobes here. For a screw dislocation, these are the only two stress field figures we have because all the other ones are zero. Moving to the edge dislocations, this is the edge dislocation core structure. You can see there's extra half plane here. Again, when considering the stress field, we need to take out the dislocation core because continuity breaks down. The stress field of the edge dislocation is slightly more complicated than that of a screw dislocation. Since there's no shear along the xz and the yz directions, there's no stress in these two directions. Similar to what we did with the screw dislocation stress field we can also plot the stress field around an edge dislocation. Again, we are viewing along the z direction. Again, let's disregard the very center where the core is at. For sigma xx, you can see two butterflies. One is compressive, another is tensile. The compressive one corresponds to where we have the extra half plane. The stress field of sigma yy is a bit difficult to describe verbally. 
above the dislocation core where the extra half plane is inserted. Initially, it's tensile, but quickly it goes into compressive. In addition to the normal stresses, we also have shear stress, xy here, around the edge dislocation core. It looks very similar to sigma yy, but turned sideways. I hope by now you have a good understanding on the stress field around screw and edge dislocation cores. Before wrapping up today's video, let's look at the strain energies of dislocations. Again, because we have the lattice bending around the dislocation cores, we have strain energy associated with dislocations. If we have dislocations present in the material, then it is not at the lowest energy state. This is why when doing annealing, you can get rid of a lot of dislocations to lower the overall energy state of your material. If you express the elastic strain energy mathematically, you will get something like this. They look complicated. Each equation describes the elastic strain energy of each type of dislocations. But if you have a closer look, it is not too bad. All these strain energies can be expressed by a common form. The elastic energy is equal to alpha, a constant, multiplied by gb square where the value of alpha is rather insensitive to the type of dislocations. In the future videos, you will see many expressions related to dislocations are either a function of gb or gb square. In this video, what we looked at is the stress field and the strain energy of individual dislocations. In the next video, We'll look at how dislocations can interact with their surroundings and with each other.